Okay, so what we're going to be going over this week is mostly with working with colors and how you can mix those to kind of get different effects and whatnot. So some base things that we kind of need to go over are you know what tints, tones, and shades are. A tint of a color would be adding white to it, tone would be adding, adding gray to it, and then shade is adding black to it. And now colors come in different groups and everything. And they're also in different uh, classified groups. So the first one is primary, which is going to be your red, blue, and yellow. Now what that means is that you can't mix any of these colors to get red and blue. Those are the ones that you start off with to make up every other color. Uh, next are going to be your secondary colors and that's going to be what you get when you mix two primaries together. So red and blue make violet, uh, red and yellow make orange, blue and yellow make green. And then there's what's called a uh, tertiary color which is basically what you get when you mix a primary and a secondary together and that's going to be your blue green, your yellow green, uh, your red orange, your yellow orange, your red violet, blue violet, basically these are those colors have these two in the name. Some other color groups that you might come across are uh, your triad so pretty much as long as the three colors are equidistant apart, it would be part of a color group triad. Another group would be your complementary colors. Now these colors are going to be directly across from each other. So that would be like red and green, purple and yellow, blue, green, and red, orange. And then another group is going to be your analogous colors, and those will be right next to each other on the color wheel. So it would be like blue, green, green, yellow, green, or say red, red, orange, orange, red, red, violet, violet. And the reason you kind of need to know these color groups is they can be shortcuts for if you're designing a character or scenery, if you want to be able to convey that they all fight for one side or something like that or if they're all part of the same group you can do that by just making uh, their color schemes by using these color groups like an, using a bunch of analogous colors or say in like Shaolin Showdown you could usually tell by looking at the character whether they were with the Shaolin monks or whether they were Halen warriors because the Halen warriors usually had dark colors like gold black, purple, and the Shaolin Warriors had red and blue color tones. So that's why you'd kind of need to know these. And another thing with the complementary colors, say if you want to shade something, instead of using black, you might also consider using its complementary color. That will help kind of darken it, but it won't make it as flat as, say, using black. So what you'll be doing for an assignment is you're going to be filling out two worksheets. One will be the balls blank worksheet and the other one will be the textures worksheet. And what you're going to do is you're going to fill these out and color them according to whatever prompt they have. So here's one example for the material balls. You'll see the hard plastic, soft rubber metal. Here is another option of what you can do. And something I kind of want you to pay attention to is how different these colors look or how these materials look. So like a hard plastic is going to reflect light a lot better than the soft rubber. You'll see how it has these spotlights on the hard plastic, but on the soft rubber it has an almost matte finish to it. And you kind of see here, while the spotlight isn't as pronounced, it still has a much noticeable spotlight than say the soft rubber. And also with the metal you can get different effects with it. You can do a 
brushed steel look or you could do something with some engraving on it if you want. Um, glass balls are going to reflect a lot more light than pretty much the rest of these. And something else to keep in mind is when you look through a glass orb, it's going to reflect whatever is behind it upside down. So when you get to that part, what you'll want to keep in mind is you'll just paint it normally and then you'll just uh, use your move tool to right click and reflect horizontally. Now with say the mud, you could go quite a few ways with that depending on whether you're doing dry mud like this or whether you're doing wet mud like this. The dry mud isn't going to have much reflection and you're going to see a lot more of the dark tones and the cracks in it. Whereas the wet mud ball, you're going to have a lot brighter highlights in there. And you might have a bit more texture. And then with the skin, you kind of have to keep in mind what part of the skin you're looking for or you're looking at. Because skin in, like, say, your hands is going to have a lot more blood vessels near the top. Or in your face, you're going to have a lot more blood vessels that are closer to the surface and that's going to give your skin a more reddish hue and then of course depending on your skin tone that can change how it colorizes as well. So when you're doing these don't be afraid to say go into Google to get a reference image like if you Google wet mud or dry cracked mud and for like skin if you look at your hand or your wrist or something like that you can do something like that. So when you start on this project, your worksheet will kind of look like this. The way I went about coloring these is if you look through here, I have a bunch of folders already set up for you. So let's say if we go to soft rubber, you'll see there's an ellipse in there. What you can do and what I suggest you do is instead of coloring straight onto these shapes, make a new layer. And then when you go to paint on your objects, you'll see it kind of goes all willy nilly and it will be hard to kind of keep within those shape lines. So what you can do is once you've kind of got it painted or even before you start painting, go to whatever layer has your colors on it right click and then go to create clipping mask and then you'll see it'll shape itself to whatever is underneath it and you'll see it has a little arrow that pops up and then if I go to paint it will stay within the bounds of that object so again the way you go about that is you go to the layer that has the colors on it you right click, create clipping mask. And then what you'll want to do for the glass object is you can pick your own images. I've added two that you might want to use on here. There's a forest and then there's a beach as well. What you'll want to do is just kind of pick one of these and just delete whichever one you're not going to use. You might have to hit unlock before it'll let you delete it, but what you can do, what you can do is you can, whichever image you pick, I would turn down the opacity so you can kind of see the ball. And just kind of do just kind of paint what you see. So I'm just going to do a really half-assed one here.
Okay, so obviously you'll want to put a little bit more detail into yours. What you're going to do is you're going to make sure that that image is behind the ellipse. And we're going to bring the opacity back up. And I'm just going to lock it so I don't accidentally do anything to it. And what we're going to do is click on the thumbnail of the ellipse while holding control. You'll see this will pop up. What we want to do is go to Filter, Distort, Sphere Eyes. And if you kind of zoom out in this preview, you'll kind of see it does this bulge thing. You can kind of mess with the settings. What you want to do is you want to crank it all the way up to the right, make sure it's set onto normal, and then just hit OK. And you'll see it'll kind of bulge out. And you can hit, uh, you can go to Filter, and do sphere eyes again if you want it to bulge out a little more. And then just hit Control D or Command D on the if you're on the Max. And for the selection, if it's not working, make sure you're holding Command if you're on a Mac. So once we got that, we can do the Create Clipping Mask. So once you've gotten this far, uh, if you look into a glass orb, you'll notice if you look through it, whatever it is reflecting reflecting is going to be upside down than what's actually there. So what you want to do is do either Control T or Command T if you're on Max. You're going to go to right click and flip vertical. You'll notice it puts it upside down, and you should just be able to hit OK. But you'll notice, like on these ones. I kind of have this shine effect going on. So what you can do is there is a page on Canvas that walks you through how to do this, but I'll show you how to do it on here as well. I'm um, just open a brand new document. And let's just make it say two inches by two inches. And then just hit create. And if yours doesn't already have it filled out like this, go ahead and just use your paint bucket tool and fill this all in with black. And what you're going to then do is you're going to go to filter, render, lens flare. And just kind of make a lens that you kind of like. Don't make it too bright. And then just hit OK. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to Filter again, Distort, Polar Coordinates, and you want Polar to Rectangular. Now this next part is important, so make sure you hit Command T or Control T. Sometimes you'll have to double click on the background layer and make it a layer so it says that. So get your free transform tool, right click, and we're going to flip vertical again. Then we're just going to hit enter and go to filter, distort polar coordinates, rectangular to polar. Now it's important that you flip your image before you do this otherwise you won't notice any differences. But if we hit OK now, and this is what you'll get. And we want to kind of make it transparent. So what you'll do is grab your just grab your marquee tool, select the outer edge and hit delete, and then just control D or command D. And then what we're going to do is we're going to right click, duplicate layer, and we're going to change document to our worksheet. Then we're going to hit OK. And you'll see it'll appear over here. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hit your free transform tool and kind of resize it and you just kind of want to get it into the ballpark of the right size if it's a little bigger that's fine we can just do the right click create clipping mask again and you'll see it creates this black shape what you can do is you can just change that to linear dodge and now you can see what was inside of the spear but it'll keep your shines 
So that's kind of one way to do a glass orb. Or if you'd rather, you could just do like what I did with that one, where I just hand painted a glass orb if you want. So in regards to the metal, so in regards to the metal, what you do is just make sure you have a black canvas and then go to filter, noise, add noise, and just get something like that. Make sure it's set to uniform, monochromatic, uh, bump it all the way up to 400, hit OK, you should get something like this. Now what you can do is you can go to Blur, Motion Blur, and you can kind of mess with the direction. But if you change the distance, you'll kind of get this cool brushed metal look. And then we'll just grab our marquee tool again. And create a sphere. And we want to right click, select inverse, and then just delete that outside. And then just kind of bring this out to the very edges. Hit OK, and then we're going to go to Filter, Distort, Sphere Eyes. There you go. And then if that doesn't bend it enough, you can hit Sphere Eyes again, and it should apply it. And then we can duplicate, send it to the right one, and then it'll be added here. And I'm going to move that up to metal. We're going to create a clipping mask again. Now this is still really flattened tones, so you'll still have to go in and kind of paint in some extra texture, or to add some, at least build up your shadows if you'd like. And then just keep in mind that metal is super shiny. And then you can mess with these blending options to add even more. add some different effects to it if you want. But so those are kind of just the basics. You're mostly just going to be going in and just painting these to get the effects that you want. And again, don't be afraid to look at references. Next up is going to be textures. Now this is going to work really similar to how we did the material balls is You'll just make a new layer, do whatever coloring you need, and then you can right click, create cl clipping mask, and then it, they will stay within those swatches. But you're going to have a couple requirements for this one. You're going to need a custom brush, and you're going to need a custom pattern. Now, 
the way you go about this is we'll start off with the brush. What you'll do is just make whatever brush you want. You can use images as well, but I'd suggest just manually drawing your brush in its own separate document and make sure that you keep it grayscale because that's what it's going to convert to when we save it as a brush. Black is going to be what holds your colors and then white will turn transparent. So I just made a simple feather and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit, define brush preset, It'll give me a chance to name it, so just hit OK. And now you'll see that I have a brush and I can change the size of it. And I can go to my settings. And I can apply pen pressure to it. And I can mess with the angle jitter. I can change the roundness. Or what you can also do is something that'll come in handy is you can double you can click this color dynamics. And let me kind of pick some funky colors so you can see what it actually does. But this will kind of change how much it changes between these two colors. And then you'll notice if I go to use this brush, it creates colors between these two. If I turn on scattering, you'll be able to see kind of the individual brushes a bit more. There we go. There you go. You kind of see it does that. There you go. So after you've created the brush, I'd always just save this as well in case you go to another computer. That way you can always have this template on hand and you can always just go to edit to find brush preset so that way you don't have to recreate the brush if you go to a new computer. Next is going to be your patterns. Now with patterns, something to keep in mind is unlike the brush it will maintain any colors you use. So kind of keep that in mind when you're coming up with your pattern. I like to keep them black and white or grayscale so that way I can colorize them to whatever project I want. But if that doesn't matter to you, you can make them whatever color you want. Uh, something that can be difficult with these though is usually you want a seamless pattern and that can be rather difficult. So what I did with this one was I just started out started out with something like this. And then I just kind of moved it around to fill out the space. It's kind of simple with something like this where it's really geometric. Uh, something else that you can try is if you duplicate your layer, you can go to filter, other, offset. And then you usually want these to be half of whatever your canvas is. Mine's going to be a little bit off, but I just ended up just manually laying mine out like this. And what you can do is once you do this, if you can go to edit again, define pattern, and I'll bring this up, uh, just kind of name it, whatever, hit okay. Now, if I go to say my scales one here, I can double click and go to pattern overlay. And you should just see your pattern right in here. And then you can change the scale of it.
You can make it look however you want, and you can add a color overlay. Uh, you can also do that with something like, say, the bricks. You can do that with the bricks. Uh, for the rest of these, I basically just painted them using my brush settings. Uh, with this one, I just set it to a high scatter. With this one, I found like one of the grass brushes and just set that color dynamics. And then for this one, I just did a flat color and then I just added in the streaks. Uh, something to keep in mind when you're doing the hair is just do long, solid strokes. Don't try and do uh, something really short and kind of build it up. You just want to do each individual strand and just kind of build it up that way. And then just keep in mind that you don't have to stick to one layer to do each texture. You can kind of build them up on top of each other to get the look you want. And that's kind of all you'll really need for this lesson. Uh, each assignment will probably take you around two class periods to complete. So just kind of keep that in mind. Don't feel like you have to rush. Uh, get the or get the material balls done first. That should take you two class periods. And on that second class period, you can start on this texture. So don't try and get these done as fast as you can. And then once you're done, just go ahead and turn everything into Canvas.